What's up guys, I'm Captain Mike and welcome to my 2024 Sea Hunter 41 CTS. Guys, this is the video that I've been promising you. It is going to be the most comprehensive walkthrough video of this model catamaran ever produced, I promise you that. But I'm gonna go much deeper than that. I wanna talk to you a little bit about our history and what led us all the way to this point of selecting this particular boat to represent Florida sport fishing TV well into the future. Um, and it's gonna be very comprehensive. It's gonna be very detailed. So I'm telling you right now, this is not going to be one of those little three to five minute videos. That's absolutely impossible. This boat is massive as you can see. So sit back, kick your feet up, pop open a cold one, do whatever you gotta do. But I'm telling you, if you're in the market for a big catamaran or if you're in the market for any big high performance center console, this is gonna be a must watch video for you. So let's start right at the beginning, guys. Let's take a, a step back, start at the beginning and kind of lead you to where we are here today. You know, 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, we founded Florida Sport Fishing Magazine. And of course, we're tournament fishing and producing the magazine. And back in 2010, we launched Florida Sport Fishing Television. Uh, we're now producing our 14th consecutive season. And along the way, we've had some really great relationships, including one with a you know awesome boat partner. And we've been in V-holes for you know the last 13 years or so, but it was time for a change. It was time to really take things to the next level, you know? So I had to make a decision and decided that a quad powered cat, that was the choice for us. You know, that was our future. It was going from that typical big high performance 30 something foot center console to something that dwarfs that. And that's where the 41 CTS comes in. This boat is absolutely massive and it is just a completely different level than what you may be accustomed to with V holes close to, if not in this size range. So let me start off by saying that we're not gonna be comparing the two because there is no comparison. You know, a lot of people have asked me, how does this boat compare to my previous 39 foot CV? I wanna stress, it's just unfair to make that comparison. This is a 41 foot cat quad V10, 400 horsepower outboards, electric steering, next generation Furuno navigation and fish finding system, you know, versus a 39 foot, triple outboard powered with the Mercury 400 V6, the L6 uh, Verados, you know, you just can't compare the two. This boat weighs more than twice what that boat does. Um, and it handles completely different. And we're gonna talk a lot about that too. What's right for you? What is that difference between catamaran versus V-hull? And I think that this is really gonna be a great opportunity to share that with you. Now let's compare this to really some of the other leading catamarans out there because again, there's not a lot, but you guys know who I'm talking about, the Freeman 42s, the Invincible 40s. There's some other ones out there as well. They're all great rides, but pound for pound, foot for foot, this boat's gonna be the heaviest. You know, it's foam filled, every crevice, every void that provides stability, it provides sound deafening qualities. Most importantly, the boat's unsinkable, okay? So a lot of different benefits to having a foam filled boat, but it also adds weight and weight, of course, could at the end of the day decrease performance. But here it seems that Sea Hunter has really found that balance, that perfect secret sauce between weight and performance and horsepower where it all just comes together and really leaves you with just an incredible platform. So comparing them to the, the V-holes, you know, like we were doing, like we said, a catamaran of course has two sponsons, completely different than a traditional V-hole. And not only does the boat have two sponsons, almost two boats connected down the center, through a tunnel, of course, but those sponson designs also vary greatly. Some of the other manufacturers have a symmetrical hull. Uh, some have a hybrid between an asymmetrical and a symmetrical hull. The 41 CTS has an asymmetrical hull. And what that means is the outside of that hull, the outside of that sponson is different than the inside. Whereas over on the starboard side here, the inside is 
almost straight up and down and the outside is just completely different, asymmetrical versus if it was like a kayak or a canoe where or even a typical V-hole, right? Where you have a boat that's perfectly even. It's symmetrical on both sides. So there are benefits to each design and you know, some believe one is better than the other and each may provide a little bit of enhanced performance. You know, I, I don't know at the end of the day, which is the best. I know that this 41 CTS, this Sea Hunter with this asymmetrical hull, the performance is incredible. Now understand I've had this boat for just under a month and I've been waiting to put together this preview because how do you genuinely, honestly, methodically, you know, comprehensively put together a boat preview on a boat that you haven't really run a lot. So I wanted to at least get close to a month under my belt, fish the boat in a wide variety of conditions. And I've experienced everything from flat calm seas to crisp four to six footers. That's what I've dealt with so far. Uh, maybe an occasional bigger one thrown in the mix. Uh, so over time, I'm sure as I continue to experience different conditions, I'll have more information and even a better feeling for the boat. But thus far, I believe I really have, you know, a good understanding of how she handles in various different conditions. And I'm gonna share that with you because again, it's different than a V-hole. Some of the other benefits, look how high I am off the water, right? In a traditional V-hole, you're not gonna be this high off the water crushes waves, very, very little spray or sneezing. There's tremendous flare, okay, you could see that right there. The boat gets up and goes on top of a wave, but you really need to understand how to fine tune, how to tweak the performance by utilizing trim or trim tabs. And by the way, this Sea Hunter 41 CTS is one of, if not the only cat in this class with trim tabs. And we don't use them a lot because we're trimming those motors independently. Okay, right there on that Mercury digital throttle and shift with our fingertips. We're literally manipulating each of those four outboards based on the conditions that we're facing. It's not a set it and forget it type of ride. It's a I don't want to say constant or consistent, but having that ability to consistently and constantly fine tune that ride at the end of the day, just provide you with a more comfortable boat in just about any conditions that you could face. A little bit more into it for an operator who's running a boat like this versus a V-hole, there's more to it. You have to understand the hydrodynamics a little bit better. You have to understand how the boat behaves as far as leaning. You know, we're used to right in a V-hole when you take a sharp turn inward, you know, we'll say to port, you're used to that boat leaning in and, you know, turning to port. However, on a catamaran at a high speed turn, when you turn into port, the boat doesn't lean in but rather she tends to lean out. So that feeling on your body is completely different. It's 100% opposite of what you're accustomed to. You think you're gonna go this way and you're pushed this way. So it does take a little getting used to, but once you do, and once you're fluid with the boat and, and really truly understand that ride, there's nothing like it. There really isn't. I think if there's one word to sum it all up, at least for me, I mean, certainly the quality of the boat's incredible. Incredible. We're going to talk about the build, the fishability, the range, all of those benefits, but the comfort, comfort. Look, I'm no spring chicken anymore, and I like to fish, and I'm hardcore, but I also like to fish comfortably. And I know a lot of you out there do as well. The comfort level of this boat is so far and beyond anything I've ever experienced that I'll never go back. And anyone who chooses that over this, there's only one reason you would do that. It's because you haven't personally experienced this. Because if you did, the decision is easy. Once we made that decision and said, hey, let's go big, let's go something that really dwarfs what we had. We don't wanna take a step backwards. We wanna take a step forward. Let's go to a big cat. I really narrowed it down to three different options, as I mentioned to you earlier, and those were the three options, the Freeman 42, the Invincible 40, and the Sea Hunter 41 CTS. Clearly, you see which one I chose. Those are great rides, and if that's what you're in now, get out there, enjoy every minute of it, okay? But if you're in that market for something in this class, you owe it to your yourself to experience the difference, experience the, you know, feel the difference, touch it, feel it, smell it, okay, run it, fish it, 
and then do the same with all of the other models that are out there, regardless if you're looking for a V-hole or a cat in this range, so you can make an educated decision. One of the, we'll call it a downside to a cat in this class is of course, you've got to power the boat with quads versus, you know, you could get away with twins or triples, of course, on a big V-hole, even in this same size class. But here we're talking about quads. So that's, you know, could be a downside for some people, the four engines instead of three. But that's really what these boats require. And not only quads, but we've learned that the Mercury V10 400s, the robust engines with so much torque and big lower units are just the ideal power plant to really achieve peak performance. Anything less than that, and I think you're gonna be wanting more. You're always gonna be looking for a little bit more that the boat and that power package may not be able to deliver. Here, we've reached that peak, and I'll tell you, I don't know how much further you can go than this right here. 41 feet long, 12 feet wide, 22 to 23,000 pounds ready to fish, okay? Big heavy boat, very, very high up off the water, very deep gunnels, manufacturing process, unbelievable carbon fiber kevlar incorporated into the entire boat so not only is she unsinkable she's practically bulletproof okay it's really incredible and of course that's important when you're flying across you know waves in different conditions you obviously want a boat that feels sturdy under your feet that's going to last you know longer than you are and that's going to give you that solid ride so that construction method was and the construction materials were really really important Important to me. And another nice feature about it, that carbon fiber Kevlar, man, that just looks cool. It really does under all of the hatches, on the dash, you know, to see that material, just, you know, you know, the quality is right there. You're seeing it with your own eyes. The factory is in South Florida here. They build the boats in Homestead. Another benefit for me, another reason I chose this particular boat, and there are a lot of reasons, but that's one of them. You know, local, they're right in Homestead, and they have a factory-owned and operated marina in Key Largo that does all of the pre-delivery, fine testing and tuning, maintenance on boats, resale on different boats, any sort of service that you may need on the boat. You know, you could see there's a couple guys here real gem marine detailing. These guys are absolutely incredible. They're ceramic coating the boat. You can have stuff like this done right there at their marina. They've got a travel lift and all of that good stuff. So that convenience factor was another big benefit for me. Having that support right there, you know, was huge. Then in addition to that, and we'll talk about the design, but I think the most important factor was the people. You know, when I narrowed it down and I started researching and I made my decision, I said, or well, hoping I made the right decision, I said, I'm gonna go with a C-141 CTS. To make that final decision and pull that trigger, I contacted as many people as I could who owned Sea Hunters. I wanted to learn about their experience, not only with this model, not only with this boat, with any Sea Hunter. Okay, I wanted to learn how their relationship was with the factory, with the company, with the sales representatives, how they were enjoying their boat. And it's funny, all of the stories started the same way. They didn't start with the boat at all. They started with the people. They all mentioned, you know, the individual salespeople or service department or the technicians or even the owners of the company, you know, and how they interact with them. That right there really says a lot, okay? Really says a lot. And they know everybody by name. So that was just yet another factor and really gave me that peace of mind that I was making the right decision. And I'll tell you what, looking back now, I certainly couldn't be any happier. So we've got so many already good factors going on and so many key features to the boat that you can clearly see from the outside in. Okay, you've got that flare. There are design features on this boat that you and I don't even understand. Okay, that went into building this every single angle, every single degree, every inch of it has been well thought about. Okay, well designed, tested in so many different conditions. You know, obviously they want a platform that could really perform incredibly well in anything from flat calm seas to 14 foot seas, right? Or anything in between. And it's hard to find that balance. Think about that. You're not talking about a car that's running on a flat road consistently that maybe goes up and down a little hill every now and then. Here you're talking about 
not only every day changing, not only every hour, but literally almost every minute, everything is changing in the environment that we fish in. And to have that one platform that can be versatile enough to handle all of that is huge. And that's another area where the cats come into play, in my opinion, over the V-holes, is that you can tweak them, you can run them hard or run them soft or run them any way you would like in so many different conditions and never lose that comfort factor. Look, make no mistake, you can run this boat 75 miles an hour in just about anything out there. That's not the idea, that's not the goal. This is about finding that sweet spot with these big catamarans and having a nice, comfortable, you know, dry, safe ride in any conditions. And that might be 28, 38, 48, or 58, right? Or anywhere in the middle there, again, depending on those conditions. And that's what these boats are just really magical at being able to accomplish. So much deck space, we're gonna get into that. The comfort level, huge step up from anything I've been in in the past. I wanted to increase that comfort level, not only for myself, but more importantly, for anglers that are fishing with us on our fishing courses, for guests, family, friends, for everyone. Everyone loves to have that experience. And there are, even though this is a hardcore, high performance fishing boat, there are a lot of comfort amenities, comfortable amenities on here that that we'll get into and you'll see it. it's absolutely the perfect family boat. You know, everybody says, hey, I want that cabin. I want to be able to step out of the weather. First of all, we're in Florida. Why do you want to step out of this beautiful weather? You want air conditioning, go sit in your living room. Okay, those cabins, all that ends up being is storage. It really does, you know, very few times do anglers and their families really utilize that cabin for what it was kind of designed for. It ends up being a tax tackle locker, storage locker, just, you know, a place to use the head or whatever, which of course we have here also. So I don't know what more you can ask. And boating here in Florida, especially South Florida, the Florida Keys, the Bahamas, the Caribbean, it's all about being outdoors, experiencing, you know, the fresh air and everything that mother nature has to offer to us, right? So that's my preference is I like to, to have as much deck space and to be as open and as free as possible. There's so much for us to have made that decision to go from V-hole to cat was just a giant leap forward, but we knew it would come with challenges, going from triples to quads, you know, upgrading all of the electronics, really wanting to build a boat, not only for present day, you know, my goal wasn't to build a boat for 2024. My goal was to build a boat for 2028. If you woke up January 1st, 2028 and said, you wanna build a boat and you walked into Sea Hunter, they're gonna build you this, this combination right here. I really wanted something that was ahead of the curve. And that, you know, took a lot of support, a lot of challenges that we had to overcome. But at the end of the day, it came together just incredibly well. I mean, better than any of us could have expected. So really, really excited about that. And I wanna stress again, look guys, as we go through this whole review there's a lot of great boats out there there really are and there's a lot of people who are so happy in the boats that they're in I, I couldn't be happier for them and I'm certainly not going to sit here and tell you that this is absolutely the best boat for you I don't know that I could tell you it's the best boat for me and based on all of the factors that were important to us the quality the comfort the fishability the range you know the locality of the manufacturer the five-star service the construction processes and materials, the way we fish, where we fish, how we fish, who we fish with, you know, filming two different shows, all of these different factors went into our decision-making process. And at the end of the day, this is what they spit out, which far supersedes anything else that I could have compared it to, you know, but for you, your parameters may be different. So hopefully somewhere along, you know, this entire project here, this entire walkthrough, you'll be able to pick up a few things that could help you one way or the other and either outfitting your new boat or making a decision on a new boat. But if you're gonna take anything away from this, 
take away the education factor. Take away the fact that you shouldn't make a hastily dumb decision, okay? This is not a cheap investment. There's a lot of moving parts. Your life is at stake. Your fishing is at stake. Make an educated decision. Just because you went out with a boat one day with a guy who was behind the wheel on a sea trial and he's got 10,000 hours behind that boat, took you out and you had an exceptional ride in three to five foot seas, great. That's absolutely awesome. That doesn't mean that there aren't other exceptional rides out there. You know, do that homework, take that away from this, put in the time, make an educated decision, and, you know, interview, interview other owners of that brand just like I did. And if you do all of that, whatever it is that you choose will be the right boat for you. So hop aboard, let's take a look at the deck plan. Hey guys, welcome back to our Sea Hunter 41 CTS walkthrough. We've talked to you about why we chose this particular bow. We've touched on some of the benefits of a catamaran over a V hull, and you've just jumped aboard with us here. And I want to kind of walk you through the entire deck layout and some of the important features that really stood out to me when deciding is this the right model? So, first of all, up in the bow here, okay, I mean, clearly you can see all of the room. You can literally have a basketball game up here if you wanted to. The gunnels are really, really high, very, very safe, ample room. I don't care what you want to do up here. Literally, we've had 15 people up here dancing, and that's not a joke. Of course, big platform non-skid you can get up there to throw a cast net you can get up there to fight a fish you can get up there to jump in the water if you want i don't care what you want to do but there's just a huge area right up in the bow large anchor locker easy anchor puller an easy five is being installed right in that anchor locker two more hatches okay for fenders additional ground tackle sea anchor two cleats up in the bow there. So this area alone is impressive. Very, very wide, very deep, stable, lot that you can do up there. Obviously, the entire open deck space here. And by the way, as you can clearly see, we've got some really awesome upholstery. The entire boat, we chose a two-tone gray with a navy blue thread. Okay, it really just came out awesome with the navy blue accents. It just, I, I couldn't be any happier with how that ultimately, you know, came out on the seats and on, you know, the combing bolsters all the way around. And again, it's just about that comfort. We talked about that earlier and you can see where that that is right on my knee and on my hip. So it's just at the perfect height. One thing that you'll also notice, and you can't ignore these, you can't miss them, are these grab rails, right? This is the first boat that I've had that's had these grab rails. And at first I was kind of questioning it, thinking, do I really need those? Do I really want them? Is that just a corny little gimmick, so to speak? And the answer is, once you have a boat with these grab rails, you never want to be in one without it. Really, really nice. Even the boat is so wide and so stable and so safe. It's still really nice to have a place to grab onto as you're walking up and down the side of the boat here. Okay, for kids, for women, even of course for anglers in all sorts of conditions. Because remember, in stuff where you would cancel trips and snotty weather where you would be sitting at the dock, you could be out there fishing. This opens up a whole new world for you. So just having that safety feature really really nice and by the way you know the heritage of sea hunter boats dates all the way back to the aircraft parts manufacturing industry where redundancy where safety where you know failure is not an option you know and it all boils down to what these boats really result in and this is just one of the many many factors that sets it aside from the competition so plenty of room up here we've got a couple of wet sounds uh, uh, speakers mounted as you can clearly see huge coolers right in the deck big insulated fish coolers you could fit two swordfish you know and each one whatever it is that you wanted they're just massive and of course they'll hold ice really well macerator pumps to pump these overboard also so once again, I don't care how much ice you want to carry and remember this we talked about this in the first segment as well we, 
Sea Hunter has put together a platform that's incredibly versatile in a wide range of conditions. And you need to consider that and think about that with any model that you choose, because you may have these boxes absolutely filled with ice. That's a lot of weight up here. I may be on a long trip. These boxes are filled with ice and you have a lot of weight and fuel in the center of the boat. But as the trip goes on, those dynamics change. Weight is transferred from bow to stern, from midship, you know, you're burning fuel, so that's getting lighter. And as those dynamics change, the center of flotation and performance and all that technical stuff that's a little bit beyond me, but all of that changes as well. So finding that balance across that entire range boy, that's not such an easy thing to do. And it could leave a lot of boats lacking in a lot of different areas. Fortunately here, they've cracked the code and they really have put together a platform that provides you with everything you could expect and more in any of those conditions, especially having the ability to make those little tight little adjustments, really awesome. Plenty of rod holders, of course. This is an area where you could customize the boat to exactly the way that you fish. We have rod holders in different configurations for kite fishing, for trolling, for deep dropping, for daytime sword fishing. We've thought about it all. Some beverage holders. Of course, you could be as extensive as you would like with this. That's really not what separates this boat from everything else that's out there, but certainly it's a nice feature. The single deck. Pay close attention to what I'm saying here. This is a single level deck design huge for me that was huge not having that step up here where you have to step up to an elevated platform was just a game changer for me you know obviously we film you've got a camera guy staring into a small little you know monitor whatever it may be it's just safer for us it's just safer it's more convenient i like the wide open unobstructed deck design makes the whole boat feel bigger look bigger it, it just is bigger Okay, I really, really enjoy that. So that single level deck is tremendous. Plenty of room walking down the side of the console. You know, you could have three guys here, three fishermen hooked up and you're not rubbing butts with your buddy. Okay, going up and down the side when you're hooked up. You've got plenty of room to maneuver. Huge lockers, absolutely massive. You do not own enough stuff to fill these storage lockers. You just don't, okay? If I don't, you don't. And of course, there's one on the starboard side, one on the port side here. There's a smaller hatch to access the forward part of the storage locker and a large hatch to open up the aft section of the locker. And they're deep, very deep, very wide, very spacious. Bean bags, I mean, forget the bean bags bunk beds how about that you literally could install bunk beds you know i mean there's just so much room down here more pop-up cleats fuel fills this boat has two fuel tanks one on the port side one on the starboard side but there are fuel fills on both sides and that's a really nice feature this way no matter what side of the fuel dock that you pull up to you don't have to take that nasty fuel hose and run it across your upholstery you literally can top off your tanks from either side of the boat Really, really nice. Continuing to work our way down, you'll also see mounted on our cap here, we also have big game leashes. We use these for our heavy trolling outfits for wahoo fishing, sword fishing. There's a nine foot tether. It's a safety tether. That's really all that it is. But like a seatbelt, it retracts right back into place when you don't need them. Nice, clean, neat finish. Really best thing since sliced bread right there. Big game leash. Don't forget to check them out. Plenty of room back here. And another deciding factor for me was the size of this cockpit, okay? The size of this cockpit was really, really important to me. And on some of the other competitive models in this class, that cockpit is just not as big as it is here. And look, again, I encourage you, do your homework, go out there, check it out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. I want you to see it with your own eyes. I want you to feel that difference yourself, the leg room, the you know spaciousness of it all, the mobility of it all, and see if it's right for you. You know, interestingly, when we're out trolling for Wahoo, uh, which we of course do a lot of, your entire group tends to be right back here. So you have, you know, there's four of us, five, six of us, and we're all right back here. Okay, because of course we're not trolling off the bow of the boat, right? So in turn, you end up with 
you know, a gathering area, but a really comfortable one with ample space for everybody. Massive live wells. There are 55 gallon live wells, both on the starboard and port side of the boat. There are small little splash wells, almost like a pitch bait well that's fed off the main well, one on either side of the boat. I really enjoy these. You know, this is a little well where you can have a hooked bait ready to toss at maybe a cobia or a dolphin or a sailfish that pops up right next to the boat where you only have two seconds to throw a bait at that fish. And if you're fumbling around, digging for a live bait out of the well, hooking them on, tossing them out, you just blew your shot. It's over. That bull just swam away or that cobia is gone. Okay, but by having a hooked bait ready to go, I'll tell you what, you're gonna catch more fish. That's what it's gonna, you know, really boil down to is just being ready for every scenario. And it's gonna allow you to capitalize on those bites that you would have otherwise missed. Working our way around the transom here, or around the cockpit, I should say. This is our bilge areas where we have access to all of our pumps. You have access to fuel filters. You have access to mercury harnesses, all sorts of stuff. Very, very clean finish. Everything is finished off. Very easy to access anything that you need to right there. Very easy to service anything that you need to. And all in one place right there. Okay, so you don't have to fumble around, you know, where's where's this or where's that? You don't have to crawl through small little hatches. Here, you know, you could fit a huge guy down there and have plenty of room to walk around. Now, this is one of my favorite features of the boat. It really is. And that is this walk-through door that leads me right to the transom back here with this huge swim platform. This too was another game changer for me. This entire area, come on, look, if you fish enough, especially if you swordfish or any other type of fishing, you're gonna get line wrapped around your motors. A fish is gonna run around the engine. If that never happens to you, well, then you're just not fishing enough, right? Because because it happens to all of us. So being able to come back here, maneuver around the motors, once again, a game changer. It's already saved me fish, okay? And I'm sure it'll save you fish as well. Plus you could access your engines, you could service your engines, you can clean your engines properly. Again, you see the guys here applying ceramic coating. We obviously wanna take care of all of this and having that accessibility is really gonna make that job easier. It's like an area of the boat that you never had before, but once you have it, you never wanna to go to a boat that doesn't have it. Really a, a, a neat thing, there's a swim ladder right back here, a ladder that just retracts into the swim platform with a light. So for divers, snorkelers, maybe you're just at the sandbar having a good time with the family, very, very easy to get in and out of the boat right from this area. So combined, as you can clearly see, there's absolutely no lack of deck space. And between all of the storage, the rod holder configuration, under gunnel lighting, you know, so many different components to these gunnels. The, of course, the bolsters, the height, even back here, this is the lowest point and it's still well above my knee. Okay, so incredibly safe boat in any conditions, incredibly fishable, incredibly versatile and spacious. That's probably not even a, you know, a, a big enough word. As you can see the whole boat drains all the way back, a nice clean finish. All of the boxes are super dry. You literally can throw a newspaper down there, let it rain for a week straight, pop open that box and it's gonna be dry as a bone. All of the water is gonna drain back. There are four scuppers, four large scuppers, so no moisture is building up. Um, I tell you, man, these guys really thought of everything. So combine it all, weigh it out, with the room that you would get in a comparable V-hole in this class, and there's no V-hole that's gonna provide you with this much deck space anywhere near this. And even with some of the other cats that are out there, again, you can see the benefits that this offers and why I made you know the decision that I did. The unobstructed single level, the single level deck, game changer, okay? The larger cockpit back here, game changer easily accessible transom back here, game changer. 
all of these combined just make the decision, I mean, a no brainer. So let's uh, check out the entire center console area. I'm gonna talk to you about that next because this is another area that really makes this boat the absolute superstar that it is. What's up guys and welcome back to our Sea Hunter 41 CTS walkthrough. We've already discussed the exterior of the boat, the manufacturing processes and materials. We've showed you the massive deck design, all of the different compartments and storage and fish holds and you know everything that you need there. We've got the guys, you'll see them in the background from Real Gem Marine Detailing. We're ceramic coating the entire boat. So a lot of different things going on here. And I wanna spend the time and really talk to you about the whole center console of the area of the boat, right? This is the area that makes the center console a center console. So a lot of different stuff going on here. Again, some of the other competitive models in this class, their configurations are a little bit different. And it's just, I guess, a matter of preference. For me, all of the benefits that this offers far outweigh the competition. So let's start right up here. As you can see, we've got two really ultimate super comfortable loungers. I mean, these things are just incredible. You can see I'm not a small guy and oh, there's just plenty of room here, certainly for two. You could probably even squeeze a third adult right in the middle there, okay? More importantly, not only the comfort level, but these are massive refrigerated and freezer boxes, both of these, one on either side. So you can have two refrigerators, a refrigerator and a freezer, two freezers. And that means if really, if you want to to, you never have to carry ice any longer. You can lower that temperature. They work at the dock, they work out on the water. So 24 seven, they're, you know, they're operational, keeping your food and your beverages cold, just like your home refrigerator in your freezer, or of course, keeping your fish cold. You can throw, if you want a bucket of ice and some water, make a slush, you know, and put your fish in a slush, a lot of different options, a lot of versatility. You know, you could even use it for storage if you would like. So really nice feature up here. That's for sure. More beverage holders, half a dozen rod holders on either side. Big, big area, but it doesn't take up too much space. It doesn't encumber in your, you know, your walkway down here. So real nice, massive console, enclosed head inside access to the electronics. We've got some safety gear, some foul weather gear down there. You can customize or outfit or you know do whatever you'd like to do inside that console that works for you additional rod holders four more right on the starboard side here of course not on the port side because that's our entry into the console now this of course is as you can see just a massive area we're going to talk about the electronics okay we're going to talk about those next and the entire Furuno network and how huge that dash is but for starters let's talk about the seating a lot of different options here we've got dual row seating that's another game changer and that's a Another thing that makes this boat so comfortable. And look at the adjustability of the buckets. I can put these down and there we go. Really have more of a foot rest there. I have an arm rest right here. I mean, this is like literally fishing on a recliner. Super, super comfortable, super for that ride in any conditions. Also very safe. You're tucked right in here. You've got a grab handle right there if you needed it. You have more versatility. You can lift that up and literally just sit in an elevated position where now I could see a little bit more. I'm just slightly elevated, but still very comfortable. So it's all based on your particular preference. I chose the bucket seats up here. Underneath the bucket seats, there's more storage with three different drawers, little glove boxes, so to speak. Your batteries, tanks, your freshwater tank, your chargers, they're all mounted underneath this seating configuration, under underneath the leaning post here and this front row seating. So everything is above the waterline. Everything is easily accessible. It's protected from the elements. It's easy to get to. Again, goes back to the safety factor. There's redundancy when it comes to batteries. There's redundancy when it comes to battery chargers. You're never 
never going to find yourself in a position where you don't have enough power, especially with these Mercury V10s that are just putting out so much voltage. Um, but it's a matter of preference if you wanted the buckets, the bench in the back. I chose the bench, why? Because it's just easier for my dogs to sit up on the bench and easier for us to sit up here on the bucket seats. But again, it's completely up to you. There's independent foot rests for each of the passengers. You easily could fit three or four adults there. Access, again, right there, big door, big hatch, easy access to your battery, fresh water tank, as I mentioned, your chargers, everything is right there. Massive hard top here, massive. This is, I'm telling you, there is not another cat in this class that has a hard top anywhere near as large as this one. Provides a tremendous amount of shade and protection from the elements, okay? But the way that this thing is fabricated, I mean, if you look at the welds, it's hard for me to believe that a man and not a machine did these. I mean, really the welds are just absolutely incredible. Every single one of them is flawless. And that just kind of falls into play with every detail on how these boats are built. Enclosure, really nice feature right here. Keeps it quiet. You can have conversations when you're at the helm without even raising your voice while you're running at 50 miles an hour. Again, protects you from the elements. You could have a curtain if you wanted it, but it's such an incredibly dry boat. I certainly don't feel the need for that at all. As we work our way back, you'll also see directly above this back bench, there's a pair of wet sound speakers. We have lighting, Lumatec lighting. And I should mention, this entire boat is lit by Lumatec. It's a lighting package that I put a lot of thought into on how I would be using the boat, what's important. We made sure to light all of the compartments. There's underwater lighting, under gunnel lighting, of course, under the hardtop map lighting, console lighting, uh, white lights in the bilge versus, you know, blue lights and some of the other compartments to keep that night vision. So we really thought of everything because lighting is important and it's often neglected um, until you really need it and then you miss it. So make sure that with whatever boat that you build, take the lighting into account, really a big feature. We have a huge tackle center back here as well. Okay, massive tackle center. You could rig whatever kind of gear you would like. Huge cooler, aft facing cooler. Again, easily enough room for four adults. Look, and look at the leg room. As I mentioned earlier, I can't even reach. Okay, I can't even reach the transom back there. So ample space and you could use this for your food for your beverages um, i've toyed around with using this cooler for wahoo because of course it's long and it's just a perfect box for wahoo this is where you're going to find your tackle center right there okay additional rod holders more beverage holders rocket launchers up here in the hard top that you could access on the side of the console we also have additional big game leashes. We often troll six, even eight rod spreads for Wahoo. It's nice to be able to clip a rod in right there, okay, and have that safety tether without running it across the deck somewhere. Our freshwater fill is right here, okay? The tank, as I mentioned, is right under the console there. Additional lighting. Taco Outriggers Grand Slam 20 foot carbon fiber poles with Grand Slam 500 series mounts. And understand right now, the way I have my Outriggers rigged is for Wahoo fishing. I like to keep them a little bit shorter. I retract that final portion. I rig them with a single clip. Um, I wanna keep it stiffer with less drop back just for when I'm Wahoo fishing. But once we start dolphin fishing, we'll re-rig them. That's a nice thing about these Taco Outriggers. They're so versatile. You know, you can rig them multiple different ways, two clips, three clips, whatever works for you. So, and very easy and very safe. With one hand, I literally can move that entire outrigger to any position, move it in or out, locks right into place, and then literally up or down. Okay, so it's very safe. I don't have to climb up on the gunnel. Don't have to go up on the hard top. I can do it all from one hand right here. Additional floodlights in the stern. We've got 
floodlights up in the bow, both blue and white, depending on the circumstance, okay? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 seating for easily 12 adults. And that's without anyone squeezing in. And if you had to squeeze in, you could bring your whole family and their friends and their friends' friends and their friends' friends' friends. So really nice there. Hardtop options, I wanna tell you, we chose the upper station, the stand through upper station where you climb up on the console, one, two, three steps, and we have a full station. We stand up on there, hatch opens up, there's some cushion, so it's really comfortable as well, very easy to access, but we're still in the action. You're not elevated so high where you're in a tower and you're away from the action and away from the deck. Here, you're still part of everything that's happening and you easily can get up and down in just two or three little steps. So it's a big benefit for us when we're looking for dolphin on weed lines, when we're looking for permit on the wrecks offshore here in the spring, that elevated position is just a huge benefit and it's a lot of fun to run the boat from up there as well. So let's take a break for a second. We're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about the brains behind all of this. And that's this Furuno TZT network with the new 22 inch XL screens. We're running three different transducers. So stick around, what's coming up next is gonna blow you away. All right, guys, so we're at the helm of our Sea Hunter 41 CTS. A comprehensive walkthrough continues here at the helm. Okay, for starters, the first thing you're gonna see is the ample dash space. Look how large that dash is. Now understand there's a lot of different options here as far as multifunction displays. What you're looking at is a next generation Furuno TZT network. We've got a pair of 22 inch uh, XL screens. Of course, we have our vessel view, but I point that out because I want you to, to really realize how large this is. If you wanted to have three screen certainly you can do that as well we've got an additional data display from Furuno that we're using as a digital compass of course our ICOM VHF but what's really fascinating about this network is the processors and the capabilities of being able to take each of these screens literally and break it down into six individual screens and having so much data being provided to you or just an individual screen you know you could have your gauges on here the possibilities are absolutely endless and of course it's fully customizable okay so it only takes a couple of seconds and understand that this entire Furuno interface is very intuitive. It's very simple to operate. I think in years past, guys were a little intimidated when they heard the name Furuno because they associate it with commercial equipment. Well, I can tell you, what equipment do you want on your boat, if not the absolute best gear that the commercial fishermen whose lives and whose livelihoods rely on is Furuno. So of course I want that on my boat, but it's just not complicated. It's very easy to operate, it really is. And with this next generation equipment, with these massive processors, again, it gives you the capabilities of doing so much of customizing the entire system based on the data that you want. And with six screens and six screens, plus the vessel view, plus an additional data screen, that's almost like having 14 chart plotters on your screen or on your dash at one time. All of your buttons, all of your toggle switches, they're all fully protected. They're underneath here, fully protected from the elements. They will never fail. It's all about safety. It's all about redundancy, okay? It's a very clean finish. And, you know, honestly, you gotta kind of lean down a little bit to see where they are but after running a boat a dozen times, you remember where every switch is. And I prefer that clean look. We could have moved these down. I liked it exactly where it is. 
plenty of room here. Drainage at each corner, you know, may it be power cords, sunglasses, pliers, whatever it is. It's just another area for more storage and more gear. There's a massive panel that sits right here that protects all of your equipment. So do not be under the impression that this is left exposed because it is not, okay? This is completely enclosed and protected and locks. So I'll tell you what, they might be stealing somebody's electronics, but they're not stealing my electronics, I can tell you that. So really, really nice. We've got the Mercury DTS, the digital throttle and shift. We're able to control all four of our V10 outboards with a single lever, okay, which is a nice feature. Right in front of the console, right where my fingertips are, I'm able to make slight adjustments to trim on each of the engines independently. I have an additional data screen here that's providing me with any sort of warnings, engine hours, maintenance information, and combined with all of the data that the vessel view provides to me, not only in engine stats, fuel burn, you know, oil levels, temperatures, everything. This is literally just basically a, a giant computer that's monitoring everything that's happening. You don't even need to check your oil, okay? This machine is going to tell you, this brain is gonna tell you, hey, your starboard motor needs a quart of oil, okay? Or whatever that number may be. Tilt steering, trim control, of course, the Mercury joystick piloting. And understand there's a big difference when it comes to joystick piloting on a catamaran versus a V-hole. These boats do not maneuver, do not move the same way that a V-hole does when it comes to the joystick piloting. Let's not forget, we have a tunnel coming right down the bottom of the boat in between the two sponsons. As you go to move the boat sideways, the water in that tunnel has to escape one way or the other. It's either coming out the back or coming out the front. And that creates a little bit of this type of motion, a little bit of back and forth that's gonna take you a little getting used to. So you may be an expert joystick pilot, okay, when it comes to V-holes, but you get in a cat and your learning curve essentially has to start over just a little bit. But heading hold, uh, routes, it also acts as an autopilot in conjunction with the Mercury V10s. So a lot of benefits there, a lot of features there. Very easy to literally just move that joystick over or twist it. Those simple commands that you can do with your fingertips, you know, create actions on the boat. May it be moving over 10 degrees or one degree. Like I said, just a lot of nice benefits to that joystick piloting and absolutely necessary if you're looking for an autopilot type of system with this configuration, okay? Of course, our wet sounds head unit for our audio system, four more beverage holders. I wanna get back to the TZT, to the Furuno network for a moment. We're running three transducers on this boat. Of course, most guys run one, we're running three. An Aramar 599 low medium chirp, which is mounted on the starboard sponson, okay? We're also running a B175 triple beam wide angle uh, transducer and then finally a DFF 3D. So simultaneously we can operate all three of those transducers and get all of that data provided back to us in any way that we would like in any format in any you know custom configuration that you would like with a simple swipe of a finger. Really, really nice. And once again, look, understand technology does not catch fish. Okay, do not believe if you have all this fancy schmancy gear that you're gonna be the number one angler out there. That isn't the case at all. The fundamentals still apply. You've gotta find them, you gotta fool them. You have to be a good angler and really understand all of those fundamentals. These are just tools to enhance your experience, to provide safe navigation and successful fishing adventures. But don't just rely on this, you still need to be that great fisherman. Also, the boat has four power outlets for power assist reels, deep drop reels, down riggers, electric reels. We've got two mounted on the starboard side and two mounted on the port side, so we have a lot of versatility there. On this console, we've got a built-in foot rest. It's not an insert. It's not something that's just cut out and popped in. This is part of the boat. 
okay? It's very sturdy, it's big, it's safe. You've got your ignition switches, once again, protected from the elements underneath the dash here. And finally, I have to stress that what really makes this boat shine the brightest is the performance. Everybody wants to hear about performance, right? And of course, that's what this is all about because the comfort, you know, the quality, the fishability, all of that is great, but it's about performance. And that's where these Mercury V10 400 horsepower outboards come into play. These things are absolute powerhouses. They're very robust motors. They're big, okay? They act as huge rudders also. Their lower units are very substantial. So you've got four big rudders in the water that are really helping you maneuver and manipulate this boat and that's vital because there have been incidents and we've all seen them it's no secret you've seen incidents of high performance catamarans running into jetties okay running into seawalls no fault of the operator no fault of the boat manufacturer no fault of the engine manufacturer it's just certain combinations leave that boat vulnerable to or leave that package vulnerable to failure without having the adequate power package so certainly you can get the job done but to achieve peak performance it really boils down to these v10s not only the size of the engine the robust motor the torque all of that's vital but what's equally if not more vital is the electric steering that's the game changer the electric steering independent electric steering so rather than motors moving in unison or in quads you know or here independently they're being controlled and each engine can turn on its own that's vital to allowing you to reduce bow steer bow steer is characteristic of catamarans as they enter the water with the two hulls they want to go one way or the other right inherently they want to lean one way or the other and you get something called bow steer that has virtually been eliminated with these v10s with the electric steering top speed we're looking at somewhere in the mid to high 70s honestly i haven't pinned it yet i know we've had it at 74 and i think she still has a little bit more in her the vast majority of where where you're going to be is a cruising speed and that cruising speed is going to be somewhere between 38 and 58 you know this boat cruises effortlessly in the low 50s she's not even breathing heavy in the low 50s you're talking about four 400 horsepower outboards, four. Your average car probably has 150 horsepower. Okay, here we have 1,600. You have a 23,000 pound boat moving through the water at nearly 60 miles an hour. Do the math in your head. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that that's gonna require some fuel to make that happen. However, whatever that number is, it's quickly superseded by comfort by fishability you know you get out there and you start fishing this boat what that fuel burn is is almost insignificant it really is are there other boats in this class that are more efficient well you know what absolutely and they better be they weigh 5,000 pounds less so if you have the same boat or a similar size boat with the exact same power package and you have 5,000 pounds of reduced weight, your boat better go faster. If it doesn't, there's something wrong. But once again, that top end really doesn't mean much. I've seen fuel economy in this boat anywhere from 0.6 on the low end when I'm trolling and have that transom buried in the water, a very inefficient speed sometimes when you're Wahoo fishing, you know, you may see 0.6, however I've had it, 0.1 to 1. So there's a huge range there based on weight, based on load, based on sea conditions, the direction you're traveling, you know, do you have a, a lead foot, so to speak, and how you operate your boat, how you trim the boat. These big cats like a lot of trim. You want to get that boat up and out of the water, certainly the front half of the boat, and that's what provides you with that really stable, comfortable, dry ride. You're literally flying across those waves on the back pads, okay, behind the waves are breaking at the step, you know, around where those fuel fills are. That's also why the boat's so dry, right? You're not 
smacking down on a wave up in the bow where all of that spray is coming back at you. You're literally gliding right over top of it. And interestingly, one of the things to get used to with cats is sometimes to increase the comfort of that ride, you've got to go faster. And that's hard for people to really digest and comprehend. You might be going 38 and it might be a little bit of a bumpy ride. You want it to be a little bit more comfortable, a little bit smoother push her up to 48. Not only are you gaining more ground, okay, your efficiency is also increasing. There's a wide range of efficiency on this boat because the faster you go, the more you push those engines, certainly you're turning them faster, more RPM, more fuel burn, but you're lifting more of that boat out of the water and you're reducing drag. And now the engines are working even less. So you have a full range of somewhere between 32 and 52 miles an hour where your fuel burn is consistent. These motors, these V10s with the electric steering, gosh, they're just so sensitive, so smooth to maneuver this boat. You can pull in and out of a slip without that joystick piloting. Once you learn the capabilities and how she maneuvers, it is incredibly responsive, incredibly responsive. Out on the water, getting up on plane, I've never been in a boat that got up on plane so fast. You push those throttles up and literally in what feels like two seconds, 14.5 to 15 miles an hour, she's up on plane that fast. From there, it's just a matter of trimming them up to get maximum efficiency and the smoothest ride, most comfortable ride uh, possible. Very, very fast. And that's also because of the props. You know, there's a lot of different factors there. We're spinning the Revolution X uh, 25s. It's really the only prop that these Mercury V10s will accept are those rev props. And again, in the 25, inch size that's what works for us we have all of our props turning inwards we have the engines mounted on jack plates to give them a little bit more height a little bit more lift a little bit more clearance ultimately a little bit more efficiency and a little bit more performance as well so it's the combination of that power package with the performance and the design of the bow that combine equate to something that is really, really unique, really special that you have to experience for yourself. No boat is a magic carpet. That's the bottom line. You're still affected by sea conditions. You're still affected by wind, but how this boat is affected is completely different than a traditional V-hole. And once you are one with the boat and really dialed in, I'll tell you what, there's just nothing out there that compares. I know for me personally, after only a month, after only a month in this package, I can promise you one thing, I will never, never go back to a V-hole, okay? And I know never is a big word, a lot of things can happen in life and a lot of you know times your opinions can change, but the way that I feel now, experiencing this particular design, this particular boat, the C-141 CTS versus anything I've been in in the past, there is no comparison. It's a huge boat, but it's still a one-man boat. You guys know I fish alone a lot. I'm constantly fine-tuning my tactics and dialing everything in for efficient courses. And to be able to get in a 41-foot quad-powered cat, maneuver it, fish it, clean it, maintain it, whatever it is that you're doing for one guy, that in itself says something. And that was important to me. I wanted to make sure that I could build a one-man boat. So you're gonna see this machine in action on Florida Sport Fishing TV for the next four years, hopefully even more than that. Certainly you can catch all of our content, all of our videos and everything about the Sea Hunter 41 CTS as we continue to produce and continue to experience all of these adventures. Check it all out at Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus. That's FS sftv.com and if you want to experience this boat for yourself do yourself a favor get a hold of me get down here to the florida keys fish with me ride with me touch it feel it experience it so you too can make an educated decision i'll see you out on the water